vegetables are an essential part of our diets, providing vital nutrients and adding color to our plates. Around the world, people have recognized the importance of consuming vegetables to maintain a healthy lifestyle. And this lifestyle is taking Uganda by storm, as the demand for fresh, high-quality vegetables has been steadily rising. So welcome to this episode of NTV Seeds of Gold as we dive into the remarkable journey of Esther Luaga, former journalist who transitioned into farming and found her gold in the seeds. I've actively been involved in farming for the last two years. I didn't study farming, just to make it clear. I actually studied journalism and communication and uh, after university of course I worked for some time until I don't want to go so much into that but yeah I decided two years ago I decided I was going to do this and yeah that's where we are. Despite her background in journalism and communication, Esther ventured into farming, a domain previously unknown to her. Her inspiration came from her husband, who was already involved in farming. At first, she considered it his hobby, but with time, farming won her over. I met my partner when he does farming. And uh, as I was still in employment, he used, to, he used to tell me, why don't you join me? I did not have the interest. <laughs> I didn't have the interest. But yeah, I believe God's timing is always the best because I just woke up. I decided, let me give it a shot. And the moment I made that decision, it, it became easy. I accepted it. Yeah, and this is where I am. At the heart of Esther's farming success lies the careful planting process. She and her team grow their seedlings in a greenhouse, reducing costs and ensuring the quality of their produce. So what we do, we develop our own seedlings. We used to buy seedlings, but we realized that it was so expensive because <coughs> each seedling would cost about 300. And then we realized that with the market, uh, we buy our seeds from uh, Holland Green Tech. So, and the packet goes for 60,000, 65. And that packet has 1,000 seeds. Yes, yeah, so I felt like that was a better deal. So we buy, we buy those seeds, we develop them in the greenhouse. So this is our greenhouse. And this is where we develop our, our siblings. This is romaine. And then we have the soft, soft lettuce, soft green. More romaine. And then this side we have spring onions. After about two to three weeks, the seedlings are transplanted into the main garden where they receive appropriate care and the right measurements. It takes about two weeks, two to three weeks. We put manure, we put organic manure. Yeah, I'm going to say this in Luganda, we put kalimbwe. <laughs> you keep on watering, you keep weeding to have the quality seedlings. Evening is the best time to transplant seedlings. Direct sunlight affects them because they are coming from a they've been in a different different atmosphere in the greenhouse they are not used to the outside weather so the best time to transplant this is in the evening when the sun has set and then immediately after transplanting you're supposed to water the beds because in the night there is really no the temperatures are low in the case of lettuce, it takes 60 days from planting to harvesting. Uh, I would advise every farmer to mulch when you have the, the grass. Uh, it's better that you mulch your lettuce. Uh, when, when, it, when it becomes too hot and you do not have a water reservoir, 
the mulch helps to keep the soil moist and that way your plant doesn't is not affected by the too much sun this is an integrated farm so we have some cattle so we use cow dung but we also use kalimbwe from the buds we put that organic manure and uh, for as long as it's raining you're good to go but still even when it's not raining to get enough water we have water reservoir so this is uh, romaine yeah, it's uh, another variety that we do we have at the farm Estes Farm is not only limited to lettuce, they have diversified their crops to include papayas, a variety called Vega, introduced just seven months ago. Our space is not really that big, but we wanted to fully utilize every single space. So we didn't have, this uh, space was bare, we didn't have anything, and we decided why not uh, why not try putting purples and they are doing well. So we have this uh, purple variety, it's called Vega variety and uh, it's seven months old and it's organic. Furthermore, they have embraced the cultivation of strawberries. Right now, these strawberries are actually crowded because uh, we've, been, we've been putting all the effort on the salads but the beauty with the strawberries is the smaller the smaller the plant the bigger the fruits mm. yes so you're supposed to weed it uh, these extra runners like this you just cut it off i don't have a hook but uh, you remove it and just oh yeah you see this mm. you can plant this mm. you plant this these are roots mm. yes yeah, so you remove all the extra runners and then within if you put this in the soil in four months you'll be able to harvest your strawberries for spacing we we do about three feet so it's three feet between between a plant. So you measure three feet, you plant your seedlings. Another three feet and you plant. Strawberries take typically four months to mature after transplanting into the main garden. And their organic nature makes them a long lasting asset on the farm. Uh, this is something that is organic. And then, uh, with strawberries, once you start harvesting, you harvest every single day. So that means I harvest in the morning and then I'll have to harvest tomorrow in the evening again for at least a month. Strawberries are a captivating addition to Esther's farm. They require minimal maintenance and are grown organically, making them an attractive choice for those who prefer healthy and natural produce. I feel like it doesn't need a lot of work, you do not need to spray and the, the funny thing is even when there's a lot of weed in the strawberries, trust that you will get big fruits. They can thrive for years, offering a sustainable source of income. With a short gestation period, strawberries are a profitable investment. Esther emphasizes the importance of specializing in a specific market to avoid exploitation. She understands her worth and delivers quality produce to high-end establishments like Nakasero and prominent hotels in Kampala. We sell to various people. We sell to we sell to Nakasero, we sell to all the big hotels you know in Kampala. We supply. So this is how we harvest the lettuce. This is ready, as you can see. And then the other beauty with mulching is uh, 
your lettuce doesn't get so dirty so again if you do not have enough water because when we are preparing this lettuce there are some clients that want their lettuce as clean as possible and so when we harvest it you have to wash it what we do to make sure that you're consistent in the market and in your supply we plant in phases as you see there are different sizes we have the big we have the medium we have the small yeah so we do that such that we do not run out of what to supply so there are periods uh, in farming there are times when you just cannot survive alone you can't manage alone especially when the demand is so high so what we do we got out growers and uh, we specifically introduce them to lettuce farming so they grow lettuce and the times when we do not have enough we buy from them yeah, such that we are able to consistently supply our market. The demand for her produce is consistently high, prompting her to expand the firm. years, Esther has witnessed a substantial increase in her income. She has provided employment opportunities and is able to support her family. The financial security achieved through farming has been a life-changing experience. Money makes me so happy and uh, I guess I can proudly say I've really, I'm really seeing a very big change the, oh, and I'm being honest. The money I used to get when I was in employment, I'm not getting. I'm not, I, I mean, I'm getting now. Uh, we have uh, employees at the farm, and uh, through this, we are able to pay them their salaries without hustling. And we, we are a small family, we are four. We have two children, and we are able to pay their school fees. Yeah. So I feel like, and we are just getting started. Esther acknowledges the need for patience in farming, which can be humbling. She advises fellow youth to embrace hard work, passion, and the right market for success. You need to be patient. You need to be patient. Uh, I'm, I'm very, I'm such an impatient person, but farming will teach you to be patient and kakana. It's not easy, it's not easy. Sometimes uh, those that follow me on my WhatsApp and Facebook, most times we share only the wood. But just like any other business, sometimes things don't work out well. Uh, there are days, uh, for example, we planted, uh, we've lost about three beds and we had planted uh, we, we, we had planted soft soft green but because we didn't really we used organic manure but uh, it had not decomposed well and because of that we've lost about 300 seedlings yes so if a person is impatient you can easily lose it because that's a lot of money that is gone but uh, if you have land and you're passionate about farming because uh, one you need to you must be passionate about it if you're not when the challenges come your way you easily give up so if you have land however big or small it is look for the right market look for mar people that will not exploit you and start she also emphasizes the importance of knowing the market price and delivering high quality products yeah the market is tricky but uh, like i said when you specialize and the trick is in getting the right market getting the right market you'll meet people who 
we want to exploit you, but do you know your worth? Do you know your worth? Uh, for me, the, the, the few people that know me know that I do not settle for less. I'll take my letters. I'm very good at marketing. So I always go to these hotels, I go to these restaurants with my lettuce because I know it's good quality. For example, a head of lettuce sells for between 1,500 to 2,000 Uganda shillings with different prices for various markets. Of course, there is, you need to know the market price. Once you know the market price, you, once you know the market price, you know how much you're going to sell your lettuce at. So you you don't have to go below you don't have to go below the market price. If I'm selling to the to the market vendors, they usually buy between one five to two thousand, depending also on the season. Eh? That's per head. But you know you have you set different prices for different markets. So the big hotels, of course, their their price is slightly higher yeah than the normal market price strawberries on the other hand are a high value crop with a kilogram fetching about fifty thousand ugandan shillings it's the expert opinion with some who provides valuable insights into the planting process including planting techniques mulching manure usage spacing and overall the best practices for success in vegetable farming. So what we have here is uh, the shed for the animals. We have dung in there, we have urine in there, we have the water runoff from the roofs in here and all that kind of stuff. So it is channeled through the trench and because we leave this place the way it is because we want it to run its own nitro system. So there is a first point here. This is actually a, a, a pit, a, a collection tank, where the raw stuff comes from in the, in, the, in the unit. Then we have, it might not be so easy to see, but we have a second pit here. Now this pit has a bit of uh, hard core in it and then it will move to a third point which is right here now at this at this point you have uh, a formation of soil that is starting uh, to come up so this is a bit a bit solid from the original one and it has been processed at a certain level it will be in this point for about four months and then we let it out to join to the third point we have at this point here we have a kind of trench we have a kind of trench that we close like currently we put a, a load around it to close it to allow for the decomposition to take place the other side but if you can see if you can see that you're having soil that is starting to be formed at this point so from here it will get to this final point this final point because we have rain now so it has water but at this final point basically what we have is this now this is ready black soil that goes into the garden this is what we use when we are transplanting our lettuce when we are, are feeding the the field so this is sort of a natural system on its own it itself runs we don't need anyone to operate it but it gives us a result at the end of the day so we have close to because it gets full up to the up to the uppermost point so we've been removing the soil and storing the fertilizer and using the rest in the in the field we have challenges and one of the major challenges that we have faced is uh, these black spots these are fungal spots that are basically caused by uh, a lot of moisture in the soil because we are in a rainy season uh, the, the the soil area usually doesn't dry so when it doesn't dry the moisture the fungal infections breed best 
uh, in high humidity so we get these spots when you go around you'll find if you can't manage it well you'll find the whole plant has been taken over by the spots and the market doesn't want a lettuce that has spots on it so it becomes a big challenge for us especially as you've seen our gardens we haven't mulched our gardens simply because being in an urban setting it is hard to get uh, the mulch the the grass mulch so many times farmers find themselves failing to mulch and when you fail to mulch the plant will not get dry when it doesn't get dry you'll get the spots when you get the spots you're not making the money so this becomes a very big challenge to us so we usually uh, look for the mulch like we shall see we buy this mulch the last batch we have bought we've bought about 10 kilometers from here so it becomes expensive but it is inevitable for you to mulch the lettuce it is important to control such because this is the greatest uh, infection that the lettuce has that will fail you on the market so the ideal way of growing the lettuce and the best practice would be you using the mulch you have a bed that is prepared you see it is soft it doesn't have to be hard when it's hard the water will not saturate very well in the soil so it's important as you're preparing it to make it as soft as you can then after this you will go on and mulch your bed why do we mulch i gave the reason of the of the fungal black spots but also you want to make sure that you have water retained in your in your soil you want to make sure that you suppress the weeds that uh, that come up so you don't have to disorganize you, you don't have to disorganize the soil by over cultivating it Esther Luaga's journey from journalism to farming exemplifies the potential for success in the agriculture sector in Uganda. For me, I know it's funny and people laugh about it, but I'm really passionate about, I love money. I love money so much. And for as long as you have produce in the farm, you make the money. You make as much money as you like. So. Uh, what makes me happy is when people call you, we have uh, people we supply to. They always call us, hi Esther, is salads ready? Do you have this? So it makes me happy when um, those people call me because it shows that what we produce is actually quality. Basically what we have been telling you for years now, there is indeed gold in the seed. So mine it. Well, that's our show for today. See you again next week. Keep those comments coming in. Hashtag NTV Seeds of Gold. Wants to take a look at our letters. See our main. See the soft green. Oh yeah. Oops.